pastors, seminary students, and congregation members who are attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, it is nice to meet you. I am Moon Sun Il from Shincheonji Church of Jesus, and I'll be your host today. I would like to thank everyone who came to Shincheonji Online Seminar, which is being broadcast to the whole world. This seminar series is made up of the contents that every believer around the world who wishes to keep the New Covenant must know. I pray and wish that all of you who are watching this from all over the world will receive great grace and perception through the seminar. Let us first pray with a united heart before we begin. Father God, who is filled with love and who gives us grace and life, we sincerely thank you for giving us your unchanging grace and love like the light, rain, and air from the heavens. We also thank you for giving us the hope of heaven through your word of life to all the people of the world in the midst of hardships. For giving us the word of testimony regarding the prophecy and fulfillment of your new covenant, the book of Revelation, and the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their meanings, and now allowing us to receive the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter so we can perceive God and the true meaning of the Bible, we give you all thanks and glory. Please graciously give the pastors, seminary students, and congregation members the perceiving mind so everyone can reach their hope of heaven and salvation. Please give your grace and Holy Spirit to the instructor who will be testifying to your word today too. For all the family members around the world will have a blessed time of perception and hope. We pray all these things in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. This online seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to the health regulations and social distancing guidelines. Now, it is the most important time, which is to hear the word of life. Today, Instructor Kim Han Su from Andrew Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony, will open up the words that have been sealed for the past 6,000 years through Intermediate Lesson 4, The Sealed Book and Revelation of the Old and New Testaments. I'm sure every Christian in the world has a Bible to read, but is a book you're reading an open book to you or a sealed one? With the clear testimony of God's open gospel of heaven preached through today's seminar, please have a time of retaining and perceiving each verse in your heart. We'll welcome up instructor Kim Hansu, who will testify to God's word today. Welcome to all the pastors, theology students, and believers around the world who have hope and faith in heaven. It's nice to meet you. I am Kim Han Su, the head instructor of Ulsan Church of Andrew Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Thank you so much for attending the Shincheonji online seminar today. Through this seminar, I hope that you will have a time to understand the words of the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. Some pastors may know the content that will be covered today, and some may not. But I hope you will listen to what I will be explaining once more, and that it will be a precious time to become one in God. The words that I will testify today will be Intermediate Lesson 4, the sealed book and revelation of the Old and New Testaments. 
The main reference is from Isaiah chapter 29, Ezekiel chapter 3, and Revelation chapters 5 and chapter 10. Let's take a look at the main content first. Pastors may already be familiar with this, but let's take a look at the meaning of the sealed book and Revelation. First, let's see regarding the sealed book. Because no one is able to know until the prophecy is fulfilled and the reality is revealed, the prophetic book is called a sealed book. Therefore, the sealed book does not simply re refer to things that cannot be seen with the naked eye, but is a book in which words are concerning the future that are sealed with visions, that is, the state of the word prior to the appearance of the realities. Second, let's see regarding the revelation. Revelation has the meaning to open and see, correct? The state in which the prophecy has been fulfilled and the realities have appeared. This is called revelation. Now, let's take a look at the sealed book and revelation of the Old and New Testaments, which are today's topics. First, we will look at the sealed book and revelation of the Old Testament. The sealed book of the Old Testament is referred to the prophecies of the Old Testament. And the revelation of the Old Testament is the reality that fulfilled the prophecies. Now let's look at the sealed book and revelation of the New Testament. The sealed book of the New Testament is the prophecy of the book of Revelation in the New Testament. And the revelation of the New Testament is the reality that fulfilled the prophecies of the New Testament. Before the realities appear according to prophecies, the book of prophecy is a sealed book. Yes, the book of prophecy is a sealed book because no one is able to know it until it is fulfilled. Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says that God does nothing without revealing his plans and secrets to his servant, the prophet. That is why in every era, God sends the promised shepherd and reveals his will to his servant. Now let's learn about the promised shepherd of the Old Testament and the promised shepherd of the New Testament. The shepherd promised in the Old Testament was Jesus at the first coming. Jesus testified the words of the Old Testament revelation, correct? And the shepherd promised in the New Testament preaches by the second coming Jesus using him, the new John. Here, the new John is an alias of the promised shepherd of the New Testament, the one who overcomes. Fellow believers, you and I are living in the age of the New Testament. So I hope it will be a time to clearly understand how the sealed book and revelation of the New Testament was revealed and what the revealed word of the New Testament is through the words of the promised shepherd of the New Testament. Now, let's read Isaiah chapter 29, verse 9 to 13. Be stunned and amazed. Blind yourselves and be sightless. Be drunk, but not from wine. Stagger, but not from beer. The Lord has brought over you a deep sleep. He has sealed your eyes, the prophets. He has covered your heads, the seers. For you, this whole vision is nothing but words sealed in a scroll. And if you give the scroll to someone who can read, and say to him, read this please, he will answer, I can't, it is sealed. Or if you give the scroll to someone who cannot read and say, Read this, please, he will answer, I don't know how to read. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. Yes, you read well. It says be stunned and amazed, blind yourselves and be sightless, correct? Then it says that this whole vision is nothing but words sealed in a book. Just as it was mentioned previously, a vision is a prophecy and therefore a sealed book. 
But here it speaks of the blind. What an era, what era and whom was it speaking of? The word blind here is not speaking about people in the time of Isaiah, but about the religious leaders living in the era when the words of this prophecy are fulfilled, that is, at the first coming of Jesus. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, it says to write down the revelation clearly on tablets so that we can read it while running. If you want to read while running, the surest thing is to write it on the tablet of our hearts, correct? It also says that the revelation must be fulfilled as there is an appointed time. Because prophecies are sure to fulfill at the appointed time, we must write this revelation clearly on the tablet of our hearts. It says that this prophecy was a sealed book, and since no one can know the prophecy until it is fulfilled, it is sealed so that neither the one who can read nor the one who cannot read will know. Then, who is the one who can read and who is the one who cannot read? In the religious world, the one who can read is like a shepherd who teaches the word. And the one who cannot read are the people who receive the teachings of the word. That is, they are like the church members. But not being able to read the words of the prophecy from the shepherds to the people mean that they have become blind, unable to understand the words of the prophecy. Then when the prophecy is sealed, it is not God's will, but instructions of man's teachings that are taught. Man's teachings are not the word of God. Man interpreted the Bible arbitrarily. They are just man's words. That means that shepherds and church members that have become blind are teaching and learning only with the teachings of men. In this way, what would become the attitude of a believer taught by the teachings of men? It says, one may draw near to God with their mouths and honor God with their lips, but it says their hearts are far away. A superficial life of faith. Then the process of opening the sealed prophecy and testifying to the revelation or the revealed word is prophesied in Ezekiel chapters 1, 2, and 3. Then let's look at the prophecies and fulfillment of the Old Testament revelation and the promised shepherd who testified to it. In Ezekiel chapter 1, among the captives, God specifically came to Ezekiel, who referred to the Son of Man and showed him a vision. And in Ezekiel chapter 2, God feeds the open scroll of the revelation to the Son of Man, Ezekiel. This open book is no longer a sealed book, but a revelation. And in Ezekiel chapter 3, God commands him to take the open book, eat it, and go to the rebellious chosen people of Israel and testify to them. Here, we need to look at Ezekiel a little more. In Hosea chapter 12 verse 10, God showed visions to the prophet and used them as parables and spoke through them. Therefore, since Ezekiel is called the Son of Man, we can know that there is a shepherd to come that will fulfill these words at the time of fulfillment. And when this book was unrolled, on both sides were written words of lament, mourning, and woe. Why was he told to deliver the writings of lament, mourning, and woe to them? The reason is that God's people have already betrayed belong to Satan the devil. So in God's eyes, they are not the living, but the dead. So to lament and mourn over the dead and to call them to repentance was what was needed. The people who betrayed and have forsaken the Lord were taught the teachings of men from blind shepherds and became spiritually dead and therefore promised to send a shepherd so that the revealed word will be testified to them. What should one must do at that time? When the word of the revelation is testified through God's chosen shepherd, one must hear those words, repent and come out and be saved.
But if they do not repent and do not come out, this destruction and disaster will come upon them, correct? That is why God commanded the Son of Man to take the open scroll and eat it. And in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 11, God commands the Son of Man, Ezekiel, who received and ate the open scroll, to go to the rebellious chosen people of Israel and testify these words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen. Then, let's take a look at the fulfillment of the first coming. The prophecy of Ezekiel fulfilled about 600 years later through Jesus at the first coming. Let's read about that content in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Yes, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, Jesus said that he was sent only to the lost sheep, the rebellious house of Israel. This is the process of fulfilling the prophecies of Ezekiel chapters 2 and 3 of the Old Testament. It was as if the prophet Ezekiel had received and ate the scroll that was opened, but that was only a vision. And when those words fulfilled, it was Jesus that received, ate, and testified to the word, correct? Therefore, although Ezekiel was told to go and speak to the rebellious people of Israel in prophecy, it was at the time of the first coming, whereby Jesus, testifying the word of revelation to the rebellious people of Israel, those words were fulfilled. Then let's read together the words of Matthew chapter 15, verse 14, and see what the people of Israel were like at that time. Leave them, they are blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Yes, it says that if a blind guide leads a blind man, they both fall into a pit. At the first coming, the Israelites were being held captive by the scribes and Pharisees who were blind leaders and were taught by man's teachings. If the blind led the blind, wouldn't it be a very obvious outcome in the end? Ultimately, one may end up in hell. At a time like that, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, God came to Jesus, gave the word of revelation, and went and preached it to the captives of Israel. However, as the words state, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness does not understand it. Then can the word that Jesus, whom God was with, enter into the pastors and their congregation of the Old Testament? No. Rather, they persecuted and killed him as a heretic and a devil. This was because the words of prophecy were sealed, and they were spiritually blind and were taught by the teachings of men. Dear believers, what is the purpose of our faith? Isn't it heaven, salvation, and eternal life? John chapter 17 verse 3 says that eternal life is to know the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And in Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, it says that no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Therefore, there is no heaven or salvation except through a revelation. Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 8, that He would preach the word that was revealed that He had received from God, as prophesied in Ezekiel chapters 2 and 3. He received the open book and preached the words of the Old Testament revelation. In this way, at the first coming, it was only through Jesus, the promised shepherd chosen by God, could one receive the word of revelation, receive salvation and eternal life, and enter one's hope of the kingdom of heaven. Just as the prophecies of the Old Testament that we looked at earlier were fulfilled at the first coming, the prophecies of the New Testament will also be fulfilled at the Second Coming. Next, let's look at the sealed book and revelation of the New Testament. Let's read the words of Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. 
The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place, he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. Yes, he read well. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, the process of how the revelation is conveyed is explained very well. The route in which the revelation is conveyed must absolutely follow and fulfill according to what was written. First, God gave Jesus a book, sealed with seven seals to show His servants what must soon take place. Jesus then took the book, broke the seals and opened them, and gave the open book to the angel. That angel gave the open book to today's new John, giving him commands and instructions. According to the commands given, new John testifies to the servants of God what he has seen and heard from the location of the events of Revelation taking place. Now let's take a closer look using these images. First, if you look at Revelation chapter 5, verse 1, there is a book sealed with seven seals in God's right hand. This book is not the sealed book of the Old Testament. It is a sealed book of the New Testament, the book of Revelation, and it contains the secrets of the kingdom of heaven hidden through parables. This book was written by God, sealed with seven seals, and held in God's right hand so that no one in heaven or under heaven could open it or look inside it. That's why it says that John wept loudly. Why did John weep? The reason is that if this book is not opened, God's hope and secrets will not fulfill, and there will neither be God's kingdom or salvation for mankind on this earth. The book of Revelation was sealed with seven seals and had only been given as a prophecy. But in Revelation chapter 5, verse 7, it says that Jesus took the sealed book and opened the seven seals. How is that possible? It is because Jesus overcame. Just as it says in John chapter 16, verse 33, He has overcome the world. Because he fought and overcame Satan, the devil. So Jesus was worthy to open the seven seals, and Jesus knew the identity of Satan, the devil, his organization, and the work that Satan was doing. After taking the sealed book, Jesus opened the seals in Revelation chapters 6 and 8 and fulfilled everything written in them. After opening all the seals, Jesus gave the open book to the angel. And to whom did the angel give the book? The book is given to New John in Revelation chapter 10. God is spirit, Jesus is spirit, and the angel is spirit. However, Jesus has to fulfill the words of this prophecy and they need to be testified. But when it is testified, Jesus chooses a shepherd. The book that New John received in 8 was different from the book of Ezekiel chapter 3. The book in Ezekiel chapter 3 is the open scroll of the Old Testament, and the book opened in Revelation 10 is the book of Revelation in the New Testament. So the book opened in Revelation 10 is not the scroll of Ezekiel. But it is what John took and ate, so this book was in John's stomach. Then this book is no longer in the hands of God, or in the hands of Jesus, or in the hands of the angel. But it is only in the one who received and ate this book, which was New John. Then these words are the most precious words of eternal life. The secrets of heaven then I believe all peoples of the world will find the shepherd who received and ate this book and listen to the words of this revelation. New John testifies to the words of the revelation he received to those who are in sin as captives of the devil. The reason the revelation was given is to show it to his servants, isn't it? 
The work of harvest begins by making known the gospel of the fulfillment of the words of this prophecy. It is to bear witness to the word of the revelation that was received and to testify to the chosen people who are in captivity and to harvest the 12 tribes of the 144,000 and a great multitude dressed in white. These 12 tribes are servants of God that become a new kingdom and a new people that have been created by being born of God's seed, being harvested and sealed. At the first coming, according to what was prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 31, Jesus sowed seed, the seed in Matthew chapter 13, and promised that there will be a time of harvest, and that has been testified for about 2,000 years. And now, the time of the fulfillment of Revelation has come, where the work of harvest is being taken place according to Revelation chapter 14, being sealed according to the words of the New Testament Revelation to become the 12 tribes. These 12 tribes are God's family, born of a seed, and they are the purpose of God's creation. They become God's new kingdom, a new people created after 6,000 years. The reason that Jesus was crucified and shed his blood, even the prophets and apostles who were martyred, where the prophecies were recorded in this book, even the 66 books of the Bible, it is for the sake of the 12 tribes of God's servants. Many people in Christianity today say they fear and honor God with their lips, but their hearts and minds are far from Him. Until the revelation was opened, there are many denominations, but they do not know the revelation and were being taught by the teachings of men. Even today, because the New Testament was sealed in Revelation chapter 5, it was taught with teachings of man, which is an arbitrary interpretation. Only through the revelation of the New Testament that new John, the promised shepherd received, can we know the true God and enter the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. The promised shepherd who received and ate the book became Jesus' messenger and therefore went to the churches and testified to what he saw and heard and to the words of this book. However, not everyone is a shepherd of this promise. One must fight and overcome the enemy like Jesus according to prophecy in order to receive the promises and revelation chapters 2 and 3 and become the shepherd promised in the four Gospels and the book of prophecy of Revelation. The promised shepherd who was chosen when the words of the prophecy are fulfilled are those who have seen and heard, is the one who has seen and heard all the events of Revelation and who know the realities. In Revelation chapter 5, it says that the book is sealed with seven seals so that no one in or under heaven knows. So, who knows about this book? First of all, wouldn't the God who wrote this book know? And second, Jesus who opened this book by overcoming and fulfilling everything according to his words would know it too, correct? And third, the one who received and ate the book in Revelation chapter 10 will know, where he saw and heard everything that had been fulfilled. So it is natural for the one who received and ate the book to know. And fourth, the words of Revelation is God's seal or stamp, and the 144,000 of the 12 tribes who have been sealed in their hearts will also know. And fifth, the great multitude whose sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus will also get to know. Only one person received and ate the book of Revelation chapter 10. Then, if these words are the food of eternal life, if these words are the secrets of heaven, if there is life in them, then I believe that all peoples in the world will come and learn from the shepherd who received and ate this book. This shepherd was sent as Jesus' messenger. 
Now let's read Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Yes, you read well. The process of the creation of the twelve tribes through Jesus' messenger, the shepherd who received the open book, is recorded here, correct? It is the process of the creation of a new kingdom and a new people. And Jesus fed the open book in Revelation chapter 10 to the promised shepherd. And just like it says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 8, I, John, have seen and heard these things. From Revelation chapters 1 to 22, when the prophecy fulfilled, he was allowed to see and hear those events. Why did Jesus show new John? The reason is, Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, he became the messenger of Jesus and made him to be a witness to the churches. I know that all the precious pastors, theology students, and believers all over the world are listening through the Revelation Seminar and Introductory Seminar, followed by the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. Therefore, aren't these words being fulfilled according to the book of Revelation? Today in this era, no one will be able to say that they did not hear the prophecies of Revelation, the New Covenant, and their fulfillment. Let's take a look at the process of the creation of the Twelve Tribes, the New Kingdom, and the New People through the Promised Shepherd in Revelation chapter 10. First, there is a child born to a woman who is clothed with the sun in Revelation chapter 12 and his brothers. It says that they fought and overcame the group of the dragon with the blood of Jesus and the word of testimony, correct? Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 says that now the salvation and power and kingdom of God have come. The now here is a point of victory in the fight against the group of the dragon. The important thing is to overcome. Only then will there be the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony to appear according to Revelation chapter 15, which is the kingdom of God. In Revelation chapter 12, the people who fought and overcame the group of the dragon became the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony that must be constructed. It is a place that testifies to the overall events of the book of Revelation. And because it is a place where God dwells, it is a place that is prophesied where all nations come and worship. Also, those who overcame in Revelation 12 are the witnesses of the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in Revelation 15, and they became the bowls of God's wrath that was poured out in Revelation chapter 16. Now, let's take a look in Revelation chapter 16. God made these overcomers as the bowls of wrath. And those who overcame contained God's wrath. In Revelation chapter 13, it was poured out on the kingdom of the beast and its throne, which were the betrayers who worshipped the beast and was taken into captivity, and to the destroyers who invaded and took them captive. So the bowls contain the contents of judgment of the betrayers and the destroyers. Then there will be judgment of Babylon, the kingdom of demons in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. In Revelation chapters 17 and 18, Babylon, the kingdom of demons, have deceived all nations with the wine of adulteries, which is judged. This wine of adulteries is the devil's food and man's teachings. Man's teachings have no life, right? That is why, in this way, the revelation of God's word is being testified and the work of salvation of guiding from death to life is being accomplished. Why is this judgment of Babylon important? The events of Revelation 19 will take place after this judgment. Looking at Revelation chapter 19, the wedding banquet of the Lamb is opened. Isn't the greatest blessing for us as believers to be participating in the wedding feast of the Lamb? 
Here in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, there is a one who overcomes who has fought the enemy and has overcame. Since there is a one who overcomes, then the 12 blessings that are promised are there too, correct? The true food of salvation, the hidden manna, and even the white stone, and the authority of the iron scepter. That's not all, correct? God, Jesus, and heaven are all here. Therefore, we should use the word as our path to find this house of the wedding banquet of the Lamb where God, Jesus, and New John, the promised shepherd of the New Testament, are present. Dear pastors, theology students, and believers all over the world, what should we do when God opens His word and shows us all the evidence at the appointed time? Should we persecute like the Israelites did at the first coming? No. In the name of Jesus, I pray that all of you will be hungry and thirsty for righteousness and become the precious global family of faith who receive all these words of the revelation. In conclusion, at the first coming, the promised shepherd was Jesus. Only through the words of the Old Testament revelation of Jesus could one enter the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. And at the second coming, the promised shepherd is New John. Jesus at the second coming promised to convey his words of the New Testament revelation through New John. And one accepts those words with their heart, they will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. Second content to conclude with, is what, the, what is the reason for giving the New Testament and the prophecies of Revelation today? This is to capture the dragon, take away sin and death, and to give eternal life in the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you and I will find the promised shepherd of the New Testament, New John, who is promised in the New Testament and the book of Revelation. Hear the words of Revelation. Understand it and enter the hope of heaven and eternal life. I hope that you will listen to the Word of God many times, understand it carefully, and make God's treasure your own. Lastly, we are one in God and in Jesus. Let's shout together with the meaning of becoming one with God and Jesus in the Word. We are one. Yes, now that we have finished, I will pray. Father God, whom we are most grateful for, we sincerely thank you for your abundant grace and love. In particular, we sincerely thank you for opening this online seminar all over the world and allowing us to share the Revelation Seminar, Introductory Seminar, followed by the Testimony of the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. Precious pastors, theology students, and believers from all over the world are listening to the revelation of the Word. So please give everyone the ears to hear and the heart to understand, and allow us to become one with God and the Word of this revelation. Today, we saw in your word regarding the sealed book and revelation of the Old and New Testaments in Intermediate Lesson 4. Father God, allow those who see and hear your word to meet the promised shepherd of the New Testament, listen to the word of testimony of the, of the New Testament revelation and understand so that we all become the main characters and reality of the kingdom of heaven and eternal life that we hope for. We ask that you grant us this hope. Many hours have been testified through these seminars, and there's still more to go over. Father God, until the end of the seminar, please open up the circumstances and situations of the people in the world who are listening to these words, and allow everyone to hear your word, understand them, and come before you. We thank you for all your words, and we ask and pray for all this, believing in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Yes, thank you so much for listening to the end.
The title of today's lesson is the results between those who kept the covenant and those who did not. Deuteronomy 28 explains the covenant made with the people who have been chosen by God and the result of that covenant. Shouldn't a believer who understands these words keep the covenant? But how about the chosen people in the Bible who made that promise with God? Did they keep it well? Those who take their places in heaven from the east and the west are the ones who have kept the new covenant. Who are they in reality? Just as you saw in the video, the topic of our next seminar is Intermediate Lesson 5, the results of those who kept the covenant and those who did not. The seminar will begin at the same time as it did today. Please do attend, and I hope all of us can enter the kingdom of heaven of our hope together. Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, is being broadcast in 24 different languages via Shincheonji's official YouTube channel. Countless pastors and seminaries have showed great interest in Revelation Seminar which went on until last December, and they're vying to sign MOU with Shincheonji Church of Jesus to be one with us. Shincheonji is open for anyone who loves the Word. If you have any questions about our church or our teachings, including today's lesson, please call the number you see on the screen. We'll make sure to answer your questions with kindness in detail. We'll finish the seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll conclude today's Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. Thank you for being with us.